should one stand up while praying on an airplane? Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you can stand up praying on an airplane, then do so. If you can speak to one of the, 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 uh, the, the employees, the stewardess, or whatever they're called on the plane, how about can I get five minutes uh, pray in the back where the kitchen is? People are asleep, no one's using this bathroom, play here. And if you can't, there's no space, or they're gonna look at you, they're gonna think that you're trying to do something illegal, you're gonna be accused of being a terrorist or something outlandish. Fatakullah must not talk to him. Fear Allah wherever how the best way you can sitting down. If you're gonna to get to your destination and the prayer is gonna be out, like Fajr, pray sitting down. If you can face the qibla, do it. If you can't, pray the best way you know how, the best way you can. Hmm? That's my advice. Allahu alam. And yani, it's a very scary thing when you get on an airplane and you're going to a Muslim country and you know or you feel or you guess that the majority of the passengers are Muslim or supposedly Muslim and you're the only one who prays. Very, very, very disheartening. Extremely scary. Yani, Allah mustaan. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And it just makes you think about that view that we spoke a couple years ago how some people may say, some ulama may say that it's an impractical view to say that those who don't make salat are kuffar. I'm not saying this is my view. Some ulama, they've said this. They say it makes no difference whether you say the tariq of salat is a Muslim or kafir because there's so many people around us and our families, our communities, our neighbors that do not make salat. So what will be the benefit of saying that he's a kafir? He's your brother-in-law. You want to still give him salams. He's going to come over your house, your father, your grandfather, this one, and they're still going to give you salams. They're going to eat your food. You're going to eat their food. Or are you going to say, why well, they? Where are you going to eat from? The butcher doesn't pray. And you know he doesn't pray. You what? You know he doesn't make salat. You see him sitting there smoking a cigarette, time to pray. Sun rises, sun sets. Maghrib is out. Isha is done. He didn't pray. Where are you going to eat your food from? Where are you going to get your throat made at? You're not going to walk into a place overseas and say, what? And he's going to, you know, he says, sorry, sorry, sorry. Who's going to do that on me? You've seen that? So oftentimes, people, they, and how many women will be divorced from their husbands? Immediately. For husbands that don't what? Don't pray. How crowded are the masjids on Jumu'ah? Every single masjid overseas in Medina is packed for Jumu'ah. The other prayers, it's not packed. So you can't say everybody's at work, like you may say in America. Everyone understand this? Everyone's supposed to be a Muslim. Everyone's supposed to be praying. Something is wrong. Fajr, only one row in the masjid. And the whole neighborhood is what? Supposed to be? Something's wrong. Are people praying in their homes and then going back to sleep? Or people not praying at all? So we have to be mindful of these things. So you're on an airplane, and you see you're the only person get up and making wudu. It hurts your heart as a Muslim. May Allah help us and guide us all.